to the Export A Extreme Sports Round of the Snapple Canadian National Motocross Championships from Alberton, Quebec. In round seven from the Wastelands in British Columbia, we finally got to see some blue on the podium. Pacific Yamaha's Jay Whipple took its first ever Canadian National 125 overall win. Whipple had excellent starts on the fast hard pack track and battled with the seat racing Yamaha's Ryan Gold in both photos to lead the pack. Fox's Gold had his best finish of the series, finishing second in the first moto. Kawasaki's Blair Morgan was dominant in round seven. Despite being involved in a first turn pileup, Morgan battled back from last place to an amazing fifth place finish in the first moto. Morgan finished second overall in the 125s and swept the 250 class with two first place finishes. Honda's best finish came from Richmond Motorsport and a Cherby's Justin Huska who finished fourth overall in both the 125 and 250 classes. Missing in action last week was Suzuki's Ryan Lockhart and Kawasaki's Darcy Lange. Lockhart broke his wrist practicing earlier that week and Lange broke his thumb during the Saturday practice round. Get ready to enjoy the ride as the gate drops next on the Snapple Canadian National Motocross Championships. Thank you, Mark. I'm here with my arch rival and nemesis, Carl Valancourt. Carl, how many times do we go into the last few rounds only a handful of points apart? Unfortunately, Ross, too many times, and I wish I could have gone in the last few rounds with a big points lead, but that wasn't the case. But uh, just it, it just shows you how good the competition is between these guys. They're really close, and it just makes for more exciting races. How do you think Morgan and DeHaan are going to handle this with only 11 points separating them going into the last two rounds here? Uh, it's hard to say. The difference between me and you back then, we were in the same teams where we could like run each other off the track, but uh, I, I don't think it's going to happen between Morgan and Dahan being on the same team. I think it's going to be clean racing and definitely good racing, but uh, next two rounds we'll, uh, we'll, hit, we'll have to wait and see what happens. The 125 pack is no surprise. It's the trio of Kawasaki's of Morgan, Dahan and Lange. We've got Whipple in fourth place on that Yamaha and Mesley rounding out the top five on that machine racing Honda. As we move into the 250 class, it's repeat green all over again. Morgan, DeHaan, and Lange. And rounding out the top five is Whipple and DeVries on their Yamahas. Welcome back to the Export A Extreme Series Round 8 of the Snapple Canadian National Motocross Championships. First 125 moto of the afternoon. The 32nd board is up. Riders are on the line. Anticipation is high. The adrenaline is starting to flow. Last minute checks have been made. The riders are focusing on the board, waiting for the five second board, which is up, getting ready for the drop of the gate. Bottles are pinned and they're off, Ross. Coming into this first corner, it's a right hander. They've got to go up the hill, Ross. Who's going to get the whole shot? A muddy uphill start. Looks like the Han, number 26 on that Kawasaki out front there, followed closely by number six, Gold, and uh, number 10, Jason Thorne. A great start for number 26, Doug DeHaan, but a really surprising start for Gold. Ross, he went really high on that line, the outside line, and he's in uh, second right now. Excellent start for him. Is that number 10 or is that Mesley in third place? It looks, to, appears to be number 10 on the Honda. Wow, is it muddy out there? Did you see the Honda getting sideways coming into that turn, that big sweeper? This is the first 125 moto of the afternoon from Alberton, Quebec. This is round eight. Here we've got number three, Blair Morgan, uh, buried back in the pack here, on the move coming up. Must have had a problem on the start here because he is dead last. Yes, Ross, we received word that Blair Morgan right now is in last place. He's about 50 seconds out of the lead in last place. So he must have some mechanical problems because that is not like Blair Morgan. We've seen him uh, so strong all season long. And right now he's going to have to uh, really put, uh, put it to the grind to get back in this race. There's a good shot of number 21, Simon Omen. Currently tracking in, I think, sixth place, Ross. We're having a hard time with our lap counter here to figure out exactly what place Omen is in. Whoa! Oh, Omen oh, is it's off, the, off track. the track. Back onto the track. It looked like Dubé snuck by on that moment there as he went off the track there, and it looks like he's followed closely behind by Lance Richard. What a fantastic recovery that was for Omen. Unbelievable. He slipped off the track maintained his composure, drove over one of the tires at the side, and then was back on. That is Marco Duby right behind him. Nice work by Duby taking the inside line, but Omens was able to accelerate faster to that corner. Ross, I am very impressed with the way that these riders are handling the track conditions, because right now, they appear to be very greasy out there. We've got bikes down all over the place. It looks to me like these track conditions are taking their toll. There's number 338, Mr. Cavanaugh. He's down in the mud. There's number three, Blair Morgan, just passing uh, number 338. There we have our leader, number 26, Doug DeHaan, the two-wheel pro-action Kawasaki. He gets the whole shot. He's out in front. 
riding a very solid race. Conservative at first, Ross, because of the track conditions, but it looks now like he's starting to push it out. There's a shot at number 10. That's uh, Jason Thorne. Looks like he's got some mechanical problems. He's off to the side of the track. I think he's out of this first 125, Ross. All right, we're going to set the scenario up for you. In first place right now, number 26, Dahan, followed by Gold. Then we have number 16, Chuck Mesley. Then we have number 32, Simon Belzile, followed by number 21, Simon Omen. Just to give you an, a recount of what, the, uh, what has happened so far in this race, Marco Dubé started the race, but it looks like he's off to the side and is not going to finish. Blair Morgan, our points leader in the 125, had a terrible start. It looked like some mechanical problems, and now he's starting to move his way from last place through the pack. We're going to track his position, and we'll let you know where he is. Belzile here in uh, third place here, riding one of his best races of the year for sure. Followed closely behind by Simon Omens there on his Honda there. They're battling hard for that third place position here. Belzile riding one of his best races that I've seen him ride in the series here. In front of his hometown crowd. We're back with our leader, number 26, Doug DeHaan on the Walker Transport Kawasaki. A really, really nice technical race for him. And you notice, Ross, that they started to lap some of the slower bikes, so uh, we'll see if that uh, helps Ryan Gold or hinders Ryan Gold in his attack for first place. I notice here DeHaan has pulled out a large margin over Gold. Gold must have went down somewhere in the back section because he's really stretched out a lead over him, and we're at the halfway point in the race right now. A very comfortable lead by DeHaan here. We are in the middle of the first 125 moto of the afternoon. We will be right back with the exciting conclusion to this first moto. Here we have Alex Longman, number 11 on the Yamaha, and Bart Stevenson passing him over the finish line tabletop there. Number 17 on that Blackfoot Motorsport Yamaha. Moving up a position here. Here we have uh, number two place rider Ryan Gold here uh, running in second place. Ross, there we have number 32, Simon Bazile on the Suzuki. We're tracking him currently in third place. This is a strong performance for Simon. This is his best race so far this season. This is one of Simon's best rides I've seen in, in the season here, and he's doing it in front of his hometown crowd. Olman's working very hard in fourth place, trying to close the gap on third there. Really pushing Bazile there, and they're having a great battle here. It's incredible, Ross, when we look at uh, Simon in uh, third place. Simon Omens has been right on his tail this whole race, really battling hard. We remember back a few laps when Marco Dubé was pressing Omens. Now Dubé is out of the race, and Simon can concentrate on Bazile and go for third place. Look at the battle we have right now for third place, Ross, between Bazile and Omens. Omens on the inside, Bazile on the outside. Look at that. Omens goes for the tearaway in midair, but it looks like Mesley's back in the mix. Mesley here has apparently passed Omens in the back section here and is now running in fourth there and starting to ch challenge Bazile for that third place position right now. An interesting position for Chuck Mesley then, Ross, because he was in third place. He lost that position to Bazile and uh, dropped back into fifth. Now he's battling back, and that's, that's a good sign for Chuck Mesley because uh, he's had a really strong year, and we've seen him take the lead in races, fall back, but still fight for position. We're back with the number three bike of Blair Morgan. Running for the two-wheel pro action Kawasaki team out in front in the total points lead as well in the 125 class. He had a terrible start. We think he had some mechanical problems, but right now he is working his way through the pack. He was in last, Ross, but now we're tracking him in 13th place. So way to battle back, Blair, because you really got to be happy with that type of uh, that type of aggression. Ross, we're tracking the number 26 bike of Doug DeHaan, riding for the two-wheel pro action Kawasaki team. He's in first place, and he has really opened up his lead on Ryan Gold. That last lap, we tracked him about 20 to 30 seconds ahead of Gold. And there are about four or five uh, slower bikes that he has lapped that are in between the two riders. Oh, man! DeHaan just about went down into that, that loose, uh, wet soil and that inside turn there, Ross. That's right. He was looking down at his shifter. He seemed to be kicking a rock or a piece of mud out from between it and wasn't quite watching where he was going and hit a couple gnarly bumps and uh, swapped and uh, really straightened them out there. Well, it looks like this track is really starting to roughen up. Yesterday during practice, the riders were commenting on exactly how rough it was. They're coming down some of the big hills into these bottom right and left hand turns and the whole bottom section were, were being uh, created in, or turned into whoops with all the braking bumps, so it's incredible. Oh, we have number 21, Simon Omens passing Chuck Mesley. Mesley's pulled off to the side of the track apparently with a problem, letting Omens go by. And Stevenson is uh, right behind Omens and he's in the mix, so uh, these things are happening all day during this race. We've had problems from start to finish. Rider starting, finishing, it's incredible. 
I see number 17, Bart Stevenson's past Simon Orman somewhere in the back section here. Moving up now into that fourth place position here, and I can see on Bart's arm, he's got a pair of his goggles on there too, and I do not understand yet why these guys are pulling these goggles off. Even when they do get full of mud, you're better off to take your glove up there with your finger and wipe across the goggles trying to get a clear vision because, oh, Stevenson down, big tank slap for us. He went off the top of that hill. And you can see the back end of that bike go from side to side and spin him off just like a bucket ball. There we have a shot at number three, Blair Morgan, as he rounds that top left-hander coming back down into the bowl. We're tracking him now in seventh place, Ross. How about Blair Morgan? He was in last, then he was in 13, now he's in seventh. He's really putting it back together again. If he had mechanical problems, he's got them fixed, and he's back in this race. We're back with our leader, number 26, Doug DeHaan. He's led from the onset, riding a terrific race. Sometimes all over the road, sometimes, as we're watching him right now, sometimes in control. But that's the uh, the name of the day today. The track conditions are really tough. It's been raining off and on, very slippery. A lot of sand out here, though, Ross. We thought the water would be soaked up with the sand, but the riders are having a difficult time. We saw Stevenson come over the jump. He took a crash. Mesley's uh, been off and on. The goggles are causing the problem. It's been a real turmoil out there in our first 125, but Doug DeHaan is hanging on. He's in first place, and I think he's in control. Ross, we have a rider down. It's the Kawasaki rider. Looks like he's in a lot of pain off to the side. He's grabbing his arm. And there you have it, the winner of the first 125 of the afternoon, number 26, Doug DeHaan, with a fantastic race. He's got his mechanic on the back of his bike. They're heading back to the pits. He has got to be very happy with his performance today. Okay, Ross, the first 125 moto of the afternoon is over with. Let's have a look at those race results. Well, simply put, uh, DeHaan from start to finish on that two-wheel pro-action Kawasaki. Yeah, DeHaan with a great race, but you know who I was most impressed with was Ryan Galt. He just about got the whole shot, but he hung on to second place. What a strong race. He certainly did, and then we can't forget Simon Bazile there on that Suzuki there, the strongest ride of his series so far in, in third place. Yeah, Simon was riding a really strong race. He fought off a couple of the, uh, the other riders in some great battles, so he's got to be happy with his performance. Welcome back to the Export A Extreme Sports Series. This is round eight of the Snapple Canadian National Motocross Championships from Overton, Quebec. The five second board is up for the first 250 moto of the afternoon. Riders are at the gate. And the gate is down and they're on, Ross. They're heading through this track, which has become really muddy. Look at the water on there into the first corner. Who's gonna get the whole shot? It looks like Ryan Gold coming through the first turn. Looks like Gold and Morgan. Look at how slow these riders are are uh, taking this first corner. Look at the water build up through there, incredible. We got Haska in second, we got Dupe in third, and Morgan in fourth. Looks like we got number 31, Marty Matson's down, oh! all tangled up. Who went down, Ross? I can't make it out. The number is uh, covered in mud, but he went down hard. Oh, and we have Haska passing gold for the lead. Looks like uh, Ryan got caught up in some of that mushy stuff slowed his bike down, but look at it. Look at Ryan Gold putting it together on the inside. Huska on the outside, Gold, they touch. Coming back in, nice line for Huska. Huska slams the door on Gold. He certainly does. Well done, look at that. Uh, Ryan Gold pulling a tear away, going through that uh, big jump, going down into the pole. Ross, we've got a shot right there. Number 16, Chuck Mesley just went down. Oh, another bike went down. I tell you what, this track is really taking its toll. We're back to our leader, number 20, Justin Huska. I tell you what, Ross, we have not seen a race like this with conditions at, you know, at this point, we've got rain coming down. We've got deep muds. We've got, this track is a mess. It's unbelievable. We got Haska out front and pulling away. We've got Gold in second there and followed closely behind by Dubay looking for a way around Ryan Gold there. Here we've got a shot of Jay Whipple here. Whipple currently running in fifth spot here, working hard on moving up here after a bad start. That's DeHaan, DeHaan is down. DeHaan currently running in fourth place position, crashed hard. Ross, there's a shot of number one, Marco Dubé, who's still being tracked in, uh, he's in second place now. It looks like he's past Ryan Gold. So a very strong performance for our number one plated rider, Marco Dubé. We, you know, we haven't seen him all season. We didn't know if he had it, what it took to get back into this series. And here he is in the second moto back, and he's in second place riding a very strong race. He certainly isn't for missing the whole series. We've got to take our hats off to Dubé because he's really 
done an incredible feat here to be running in the in the top three in his first race back is unbelievable for missing uh, the whole national series with that wrist injury. Here we have Marty Madsen navigating this treacherous track here. You can see he's wiping his goggles. He's lost all his tear offs, but he is electing to keep his goggles on and just wiping them off with his gloves. We're back with our number one bike of Marco Dubé, currently in second place. It looks like uh, Justin Husker has really built up a considerable lead on number one Marco Dubé. So maybe Marco's just going to settle back into second. Ross, is that number 21, Simon Omens, battling Jay Whitlow right there? It certainly is, and Holmans is on the gas today here. He's had a great ride in that first 125 moto, and he is charging hard in this first 250 moto. Here we've got uh, Dubé here being passed by Galt. Dubé seems to be pulling over to the side of the track and almost appeared to be letting Galt by. Uh, maybe Dubé has re-injured his wrist or is just, uh, you know, from lack of racing, just uh, running out of steam. Ross, it is incredible what the track is doing to this race. It's turning it from a, a, a nice quality race with some fast riders into a, a mud bowl. These riders can't navigate at all. It is so slippery. It is a dangerous place today. With a break in the action, we're going to take a short break. You are watching the Snapple Canadian National Motocross Championship. Unbelievable, these machines. They start off at about 225 pounds that are finely tuned, and once they've navigated their way around the track a few laps, these light race machines uh, become 300-pound dinosaurs out there. They are tough to throw around. They're heavy, they're bulky, and it takes a real experienced veteran to move these big, heavy machines around there with all the horsepower that they do have. Ross, that was Brett DeVries, number 14, that just passed number 28, Jay Whipple, there on that outside line. Looks like uh, Whipple has slowed down a little bit. Well, certainly our first mud race of this 1999 National Series here, and uh, with this in mind, it's certainly changing the results from a lot of riders. We're seeing guys out front that we've never seen before. Uh, unbelievable, 20 Huska out front on that Honda and a Cherbis uh, motorcycle uh, and not looking back, seems to have pulled away. And he's another West Coast rider that's certainly uh, ideal conditions for him and uh, certainly building confidence, uh, he's on the move. Ross, how about number one, Marco Dubé just passed Ryan Gold for second place once again. So that lead just keeps changing back and forth, back and forth. Gold and Dubé really battling it out for the top points in this race. Good shot of number six, Ryan Gold, who's currently being tracked. Oh! Look, look at... <laughs> Ross, the line, in, those grooves are so thick. Gold got caught up in there. He had no momentum going through. Could not accelerate because of the slick, greasy track. It just about lost it. Ross, we just received word that number one, Marco Dubé, has closed the gap on Huska. There he is. They're in their final lap. Can Dubé take him on the outside? They touch coming into that top corner. The left-hander, Huska, still no. He closed the door on him. He wasn't able to make the pass, Dubé. Here he comes down the hill. Dubé is now in first place. What a pass. Unbelievable recovery for Dubé. He's come back up and snuck up on Huska and made the pass stick and now pulling away. Unbelievable for Dubé to come back from the, from the distance he had in catching Huska. Huska must have slowed incredibly in the last few laps because he had a huge lead. He sure did. And how about number one, Marco Dubé? Oh, it's Dubé off the track. He didn't lose composure, though. He's back on his bike, and he is back on the track. An incredible race, but here comes Huska right behind him. The battle is not going to be finished right to the finish line. These guys are really stepping it up. Dubé, I tell you what, picking the right line. Very conservative, though, through there, I thought, Ross. It is, and that shows how quickly things can happen here. It just takes nothing but a split second for your race to go from first to last right now. So for a guy that thought that he was not going to be able to race today, then he came in a little tentative. Boy, he exploded out of the gates. Got a great start. And look at this. He's going to be taking the checkered flag if uh, nothing else fails. And he does take the checkered flag in the first 250 moto of the day here in Alberton, Quebec. Here he comes. There he goes. Checkered flag for number one, Marco Dubé. An outstanding race. I can't believe it. Marco Dubé is back in the mix. There he is, taking your win in the first 250 moto of the day here in Alberton, Quebec. Let's go to the race results from that first 250, Ross. Well, big surprise, Marco Dubé on that Suzuki Canada motorcycle running in the first place position and finishing there. And how about Justin Huska, who had an incredible lead, but still a strong performance finishing second. Right on, and Ryan Gold, number six on that machine racing Yamaha, a strong performance for Ryan. Sport A, Extreme Sport, round eight from Overton, Quebec. 
second 125 moto riders are on the line preparing for a race which at right now ross looks like it's going to be a total mud fest the rain is coming down it is not slowing there are so many puddles on the uh, on the track it has turned from a nice sandy track into a mud bowl it's going to be incredible five second board is up Riders are preparing for the gate to drop. Throttles are pinned. And the second 125 photo of the afternoon is off. Mathieu gets that hole shot on an abysmal start. Look at all that water, Ross. Wow, we see Ryan Gold there on that uh, Yamaha running out front here. He's got the hole shot for sure. Right Simon behind. Belize, the number 32 on that Suzuki, is following close behind in second. So there we have it, Ryan Gold with another very strong start. And right behind him, number 32, Simon Bilzile on the Suzuki. Now, remember, things change so dramatically on the track and uh, the, when the conditions are like this. So every one of these racers is going to have to maintain his focus the whole way through. Look at the puddles that have developed in between the races, Ross. The water is really starting to gather at the bottom of those big hills. They more look like lakes at the bottom of those hills. Gold running out front in the number one position. Uh, we have a report that uh, Doug DeHaan is in third spot. There we have a great shot of what the conditions are doing to these riders. They cannot get their bikes up the hill. There is so much mud. It is so slick. They're overheating as we speak. Look at that, the steam coming off them from all the water that's collected on that hill. This is incredible. The conditions are just totally out of control. And the pace Gold is setting is a hectic one. DeHaan closely behind which is a tough position for him with all that mud coming off the rear wheel of gold. Now, Ross, you know, you look at the conditions like they are today, does somebody go into their bag of tricks and say, hey, listen, I'm a good mud rider. I'm the kind of guy that can excel in a track like this. And if they are, I wouldn't have known that Ryan Gold had this in his bag of tricks. Well, half the battle is really the start. You know, the start is so important in these mud races. He's out front, his jersey's clean, his pants are clean. His bike has very little mud on it, which has got to help him a lot. The guys running back in the back and are putting up with machines that are weighing 100 pounds more than they normally do. And of course, their, their own body that's covered in mud, which has got to add 20 to 30 pounds of mud. Okay, so let's set the stage for you. This is the second 125 moto of the afternoon. Ryan Gold is out in front, followed by DeHaan. Then we have Simon Omens. Then we have Blair Morgan. And rounding out the top five, number 20, Justin Puska. So uh, a couple of familiar names for today's race so far anyway, with Bill Zyle and Omens in there. I tell you what, those guys are really starting to show today, Ross. They certainly are. Do you see Gold at the bottom of that hill goes through that lake? It was just like coming up the handlebar heights, the puddles, and littered bikes all over the track. Looks like DeHaan got uh, picked up a little bit of time on uh, Gold, who was having a hard time getting up that hill. Look at the steam coming off his bike. There is a lot of water that's being thrown up on the block and the cylinder head here. DeHaan's got to make a move here and get by Gold as quickly as he can here. Or he's going to lose his goggles here shortly here. He can't follow this close behind. DeHaan on the inside. Sorry, Ross. DeHaan on the inside. Gold on the outside. They're going neck and neck. Coming into the jump, coming up, up into the bowl section, and DeHaan takes the lead. Looks like, oh, Gold is just, he's being bogged down in that quagmire. That's the front start straightaway. You can see how much water's there where DeHaan has taken over the lead. Ross, it looks like Blair Morgan has passed Ryan Gold, and he's in second place, dropping Gold back into third. So now we have a pair of Kawasaki's. Two riders we're very familiar in seeing out in front, and these two riders are going to be battling it out for the rest of this race. There we have a shot at number 21, Ross, that's Simon Omens. He's gone down. He was in fourth place. He must have lost five or six positions with the bikes that had passed him there. But we have another bike that's down. It looks like it's number 25. That is uh, Guy Giroux on the Montague Yamaha. It looks like he's got a problem. He might be in some pain there. He's having a hard time getting his bike back up. There's a great shot at number 26, Doug DeHaan, our leader, out in front. The steam blazing off his bike, body covered in mud rounding this track, navigating through the mud holes and the swamp-filled bottoms. I mean, this is just an incredible ride. You know, Ross, as I watched Doug uh, navigate this course, I would have to think he's probably having a lot of fun with this mud and a lot of fun, just like a little kid would like to get out there and play in the mud. Well, I don't know. I think if he had a 20 or 30 second lead, he might be having a little more fun. But right now, he's just worried about uh, keeping that first place position knocked down. And he's got his teammate, Blair Morgan, right behind him so there's not a lot of fun out there he's actually got a lot of pressure on him right now well as we look at this track and there's a lot of highs and lows in this track uh, do you suppose that uh, when they get into the high area where the water won't be uh, collecting as much that's where they're going to be able to pick up a little bit of speed and some momentum on this track 
Well, they certainly pick up the momentum and speed, but it's the same for everybody. Uh, you know, when they hit the drier sections of the track up high, the guy behind them is also riding that same part of the track. It looks like DeHaan hanging on for dear life, coming up that uphill double, but he maintains his presence and he's still on the bike. How about that, Ross? Unbelievable. He was laying on the saddle and just barely hung on to that bike to, to uh, overcome the crash. Looks like Blair Morgan coming up on the inside, shifts his weight to the back, but no, DeHaan has the speed to hold his presence in his position, sticking to the outside line, Morgan on the inside through the mud bowl. What a great shot as they head down into the bottom section of the track. We've got a major pileup in the, in the middle of one of the uphill climbs. It looks like we got three or four bikes. We got spectators slipping on the grass on the way down. It's incredible. What a scene we have here. Look at this battle we have between Morgan and DeHaan. Morgan on the outside passes DeHaan. Now he's in first place. What a great pass by Blair Morgan. Notice how he went wide, Ross. All the water's collecting on the downside, on the inside line. That's where DeHaan was. Morgan went wide, and he was able to make the pass. As we watch Blair Morgan navigate this track, we will be right back with the X-Sport A Extreme Sports Series Round 8. This is the Snapple Canadian National Motocross Championships from Overton. This is Round 8 of the Snapple Canadian National Motocross Championships, the X-Sport A Extreme Series Round 8. This is an incredible day of racing. Things have changed dramatically. This is the first race of the year where we have seen a lot of rain and we have seen the track really go to pot. I mean, look at this. It's a disaster zone up there. It looks like a war zone, Ross. Ross, interesting development. Blair Morgan has just gone off to the side of the track to get a fresh set of goggles from his manager, Ron Ashley. He's back in the race, but we're not sure if number 26, Doug DeHaan, has passed him yet. He might have built up enough of the lead. There's a good shot at number 25, Guy Giroux, on the Yamaha. He is waiting went down early in the race, Ross. But looks like he's back on his bike and uh, he's back in the game. We're back with number six, Ryan Gold, in the machine race at Yamaha. Currently, we're tracking Ryan in third place. A great race for him, Ross. He got the whole shot. He lost two positions to Morgan and DeHaan, but, you know, he's still maintaining and driving really well here. Riding a very consistent, strong third place race right now and gaining valuable points here on, on his teammates. Ross, have a look at these riders that are bunching up at the bottom of these huge hills. I mean, it's just a, it's a war zone out there. There's so much mud, there's so much dirt, it's hard to see where you're going. It's tough to see even what the lines are out there. Ross, we're back with a battle for third place between number six, Ryan Gold, and number 20, Justin Huska. Gold looks like he might have picked up a little bit of pace on Huska. There's Huska coming into your field right now. Gold's riding a great race. It looks to me like he might have a new set of goggles on as well, Ross. He may have slowed down, and that's why Husk has moved up so much on him here. Husk has really closed the gap on Gold here, and is uh, either closing in for the kill, or uh, or like you say, Gold has stopped for goggles, and uh, both of which are going to make for a great battle here coming into the closing laps of this race. There we have another rider down that looks like it's number 16, Chuck Mesley. He is in the bottom of that hole. He can't even get his bike out of the mud. It seems to be stuck in there like glue. There we have a shot of our leader, number three, Blair Morgan, on the wheel Walker Transport Kawasaki, putting this race to bed, really sort of uh, showing that he knows how to race in all conditions, eh, Ross? I mean, he really, you know, dry, wet, wind, sand, he really can put it together. We're back with the number six bike. That's Ryan Gold on the machine racing Yamaha. He's followed very closely by number 26, Doug DeHaan, who seems to have made up a little bit of ground in him, Ross. Now, what happens if Ryan Gold takes his second place? He might... He might be the overall winner in the 125 today, Ross. There we have the number three bike of Blair Morgan, our leader on his final lap in this second 125 moto of the afternoon. An incredible race. Blair has really put it all together on this treacherous day on the track. We've got mud bulls, we've got sand, we've got just about everything out there, Ross. It's been an incredible race, and we've really seen a smooth, confident ride from Blair today. There's number six, Ryan Gold. Navigating his way through those huge ruts that are full of water and sludge. We're back with our leader, number three, Blair Morgan. Navigating his way through this treacherous track. There he goes, kicking it up for the crowd, coming into the bottom section, the bowl section of this track. Here's Blair Morgan making that final left-hand turn, coming up, taking the checkered flag is number three, Blair Morgan in the second 125 moto of the afternoon. A great race for, for Blair, very technical. He's got to be happy with his uh, performance out there, Ross. He really, you know, a very smooth race, a very confident race, and he handled these conditions very well. Ross, with a break in the action, let's look at the race results from that second 125 motor of the afternoon. While rounding out the top three, we have Morgan, Gold, and Dahan. 
And how about uh, number 11, Alex Lodgman, who uh, was able to uh, pick up four spots when uh, Justin Puska fell out of the race. And followed closely behind Brent DeVries. The five second board is up, and the riders get ready for the gate to fall. And here we go with the second and final 250 moto of the day. The two gets that whole shot. There's Gold once again. Ryan Gold with a fantastic start. He gets the whole shot, rounds the corner in first place, and right out in front. Way to go, Ryan. Great start. Gold with a huge hole shot, followed closely behind by number 26, Doug DeHaan, on that two-wheeled pro action Kawasaki. Looks like Breck DeBreeze is in fourth place or third place. Boy, that the uh, ruts that are developing are incredible rust. We've certainly noticed number 20, Justin Huska, is on the move through the pack here. He has passed Whipple and moved himself into fifth place. A great day for Justin Huska. Really putting some smooth riding together. We have a rider down. That looks like it is number 20, Justin Huska. So as quickly as we said he was having a good day, he's off the track, but now he's back on. It looks like he might have just stalled the bike in that heavy mud, Ross. There's a good shot of number 26, Doug DeHaan, right now. Currently tracking Doug in third after that bobble. Blair Morgan, a young guy, but very experienced on the national pro circuit. Looks like Morgan and DeHaan are battling here. Morgan just went on the inside. Look up, they're coming into the quagmire. DeHaan goes wide. I think he's going to lose his spot to Blair Morgan. Blair Morgan up the hill and is now in third place. Great pass by Blair Morgan. He just came out of nowhere, Ross. Went right on the inside. He took the shortest line from corner to corner and made his move by DeHaan. We're back with our leader, number six, Ryan Gold, having an incredible race. He got the whole shot. A terrific day of starts for Ryan. He's been out in front or in the, uh, in the pack or in the hunt in every single race so far today. Here we have a great battle for second place. Blair Morgan has made his way up on Brett DeVries. He's reeled him in. He's looking for a spot to pass. Oh, and he just goes on the inside on that double jump and just maneuvered past him like he was uh, going through a hot dive through butter, Ross. He certainly did. He blew by Gold on the outside there. Took a much uh, more aggressive line over those jumps and uh, he made it happen. He made it stick and he's on the gas. Morgan has passed both DeVries and Gold, coming from third and putting both those Yamaha riders back into uh, second and third, respectively. Okay, so once again, we've seen Ryan Gold with a fantastic start, getting the whole shot, but not being able to hold the lead. Here we have that battle for second place. It looks like Brett DeVries has overtaken Ryan Gold for second. Ryan is, uh, looks like he's slipping a little bit now. We're back with our leader, number three, that's Blair Morgan. Blair has had an incredible race. Didn't get the start he wanted, but he's been able to maneuver himself from uh, from about six spot, and now he's in first place. Ross, did you see number 26, Doug DeHaan? He's moved in on Ryan Gold. He's picking up the pace. What do we got here? Is Gold, looks like Gold has got his goggles off, and I think he's lost a place to uh, number 26, Doug DeHaan. I think he's moved back into fourth, Ross. With Doug DeHaan following number 14, Brett DeVries, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back with the stunning conclusion of this last 250 moto of the day in Overton, Quebec. It's round eight of this national series. This is the Export A Extreme Sports Round. Boy, and I tell you what, this is an extreme race day. Ross, the conditions are out of control. There is so much water on the track. There's mud. We've got everything going on there. I think Doug DeHaan has passed, passed Brett DeVries. He got him on that downhill climb into that right-hand turn. Great pass for uh, Dougie DeHaan. Ross, we have a great battle between number 917, Daryl Martins, uh, number 21, that's Simon Omen, to number 10, that's um, Jason Thorne on the Cliff Shore Machine Racing Honda. A great battle right in the middle of the pack. Some big points on the line here. Ross, how about this? Number six, Ryan Gold has passed number 14, Brett DeVries, for third place. Maybe he took some of your advice and got off the track, got a new fresh set of goggles. Here's number 10, Jason Thorne hunting down number 21, Simon Omens. It looked like Thorny had him on the outside, but Simon Omens was able to block that pass, stick some acceleration and get out in front. We've got another rider down. Is that Thorne? Yes, it is, Ross. It's number 10, Jason Thorne. It's really hard to see uh, the riders and their plate numbers because of the mud. Ross, there is a up-close shot of how treacherous this track is. There's number 31, Marty Matson on his Blackfoot Kawasaki right in the middle of the quagmire. Have a look at that, folks. Look at how tough it is. Look at the conditions here we're dealing with today. Ross, we're back with the battle for eighth place. Number 28, Jay Whipple currently riding in eighth, but behind him on the Yamaha, number 11, Alex Longevin. Battling hard. We see Alex has lost his duckbill there on his helmet, uh, possibly from the weight of the mud that uh, Whipple's been throwing up on him onto the uh, peak of his helmet there. They get that peak will sometimes get five pounds heavy and it'll just rip the snaps right off. And Longevin has made the pass. He's made it stick there on the outside. Unbelievable. 
We're back with number six, Ryan Gold, currently tracked in third place. He's starting to reel in number 26, Doug DeHaan. So Ryan Gold is definitely one of the faster bikes on the track right now, Ross. Gold is really riding well here. He's really picked the pace up here late in the motor. He seems to found a groove, and, and that is half the battle, is when you're riding in the mud there, once you get a groove going, you just slowly start picking up the speed. If you're out there and you're fighting the track and you're fighting the bike, doesn't matter who you are and how fast you can ride, it just isn't working. And it seems like Gold has fallen into the groove here and he's on the move. We're back with our leader, number three, Blair Morgan, who was led from the onset a couple laps into this race. He just got the white flag signaling the last lap of this final 250 moto here at Overton, Quebec. He's really put a solid race together. I tell you what, he's been out in front the whole race and really riding a comfortable race where he doesn't have to worry about people behind him pressuring him or battling for position. A great race for Blair, signifying the fact that he is the dominant racer in Canada right now. And here comes Blair Morgan to take the checkered flag in the final 250 moto of the afternoon from Alberton, Quebec. A great ride for Blair. And no surprise today, Blair Morgan winning this final 250 moto here and followed closely behind by his Kawasaki teammate, Doug DeHaan, who's in second place. And Ryan Gold had a very strong weekend, Ross. He finished third, uh, followed by Yamaha rider Brett DeVries with Simon Omens rounding out the top. We're down here with the top three from today's 250 Pro Class, and in third place, Brett DeVries. Brett, we talked about consistency all day, and that's what you were. Yeah, I started out with a bad first moto there, and after that I picked up the pace and got some good finishes, and i uh, just happy I made it through the mud. I'm not much of a mud rider, so I'm uh, pretty happy with the way I finished here at the third overall. In second place, Blair Morgan, and Blair, the first moto didn't go the way you wanted, but you got the win in the second moto. What a great way to head into Walton in a tight points chase. Yeah, I feel good that I uh, finished ahead of Doug DeHaan uh, this weekend, uh, even though I didn't win and, uh, overall, but, uh, you know, just finishing ahead of him is, uh, you know, gaining a little bit more points on him, and, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really tight in the 250 class. In the 125 class, there's a little bit more space, but, you know, the, my two little uh, pro action cross hockeys were pulling pretty hard today, and, uh, you know, I got up to the front real fast and then heavy mud. Great job. So close so many times. I know you're pumped. Your first national win. Ryan Gold, tell me how you feel. Oh, I feel great right now, Brett. It was just uh, when I crossed that finish line, I kind of I kind of knew that I got it. I wasn't sure what Blair got in the first moto, and uh, I didn't win a moto. But, uh, you know, my Bonnie engines got me to, to turn first every time today. And uh, my machine racing Yamahas, Arnett, our Attridge Lumber, Aurora Cycle backed bikes were just working great all day. And, uh, I couldn't say anything less. I'm just uh, about as happy as I could ever be right now. Okay, guys, we got the ingredients for a great final round next weekend in Walton.